Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more RimWorld. We are on Alpha 16 now, and uh, there's been a lot of changes since we last played. Um, I think most of it is mostly cosmetic and ease of life improvements uh, in like the research screen and stuff like that. Uh, but there's actually also a new change in the world generation as well, so hopefully we get to see that very soon. So for the new Alpha, we are going to create a new colony. And I think we're just going to go with the normal crash landed stuff so we can explore the actual alpha itself rather than uh, uh, hurt ourselves by making some sort of weird custom scenario. We will eventually get to that though because I expect to have a few playthroughs of this before we've had our, our fun with it. So we'll go with crash landed because it is the default and a lot of the stuff for the new alphas kind of um, sorted towards crash landed kind of strategies there's a lot of drop pods and stuff like that and a lot of trading which seems very much like um the civilized kind of people less so like the lost tribe maybe even the rich explorer could be a good idea but we're gonna go with crash landed so let's get into the game we're gonna go on cassandra classic which is nice and i think we'll go with rough here uh we usually go on rough but we could go intense. Ooh. Now we'll start nice and easy because it has been a while since I've actually played. So we will go Cassandra Classic. Seed. Let's go. YouTube with a capital O. Overall rainfall. Oh yeah, this is how you uh This is how you generate the world. I don't know what globe. Ooh. The planet is always the same diameter, but since it's far larger than needed for play, we don't generate the whole surface because it can take a very long time. This is the percentage of the surface you want generated. Uh, we'll go with 50%. That sounds about right. And yeah, we'll leave these just normal so that we get a nice uh, normal generation of the world, I guess. So let's click generate and I hopefully we get to see a lovely planet like this. Hopefully. Okay, so we're in. That took about a minute. So this is our new world, guys. Look at this map. It's now a 3D generation. As you can see, we only asked for 50% of the world to be covered because it would have taken a long time. Maybe I could have gone for 100% and it would just be the initial load, but I wasn't sure if we'd ever, if we ever cut back to this map, whether or not it'd take half an hour, but it only took about a minute. So we're now going to choose where we want to put our base as you can see the planet now has ice caps I think they've gone a into a little bit more detail about how the world generates its terrain so we've got our ice caps on the north and south and varying levels of temperature I don't think they've gone too far into detail since there's a desert I assume that's a desert oh no, it's a tundra so yeah it goes um, ice sheet tundra boreal forest temperate forest and probably yeah tropical rainforest into desert so it gets gradually hotter as we go into the center of the map um we also have these villages as well which are the places we can trade with and these skulls as well which are um our evil places and they've also generated these mountain ranges as you can see as well they're in hexes now so we get to pick them the world itself isn't in hexes i believe it's still uh, a square map but for the generation of the world it had to be hexes i hear so uh let's just go with tropical rainforest sounds good let's go with a couple of hills so somewhere like here let's have a look at the terrain mountainous hmm now we want large hills if at all possible what are these if yeah they're impassable so uh, when it comes to trading we can't move through impassable terrain so if we wanted to settle here for example and raid this place we'd actually have to go around so we're going to actually choose our base wisely. So maybe I actually want to go over here and pick one of these. There's a large hills. That sounds about right. We've got plenty of places to trade and there's some uh, bandit places around here for them to actually attack us. So we're going to uh, have a very fun time with this one, I think. So let's go next. And what I want to do here is just randomize until we haven't got anyone who's incapable of dumb labor essentially although they seem to have separated dumb labor and made it into hauling and stuff like that but we will yeah there we go right that one 
Oh dear. You've got a go juice and a wake up juice addiction. No, we're not doing that. That just sounds horrible. You've got asthma. Oh dear. Yeah, if you've known our previous runs, we have um, a high tendency to get the worst possible people. Yeah, you seem fine. So I'd rather start off with some relatively okay people. Yeah, you're fine. You do have neurotic, which I believe is actually kind of bad. But uh, the rest of it seems good. And yeah, that one's all right. Chemical fascination, prostophile, and very neurotic. Constantly nervous about everything that he has to get done. He will work extremely hard to attain the state of affairs, but his nerves can easily get the better of him, so he, he uh, breaks a lot easier. I'm actually not going to do that. Um, yeah, there we go. Depressive is a lot better. Permanent mood debuff. We can deal with that. So we've got NG the engineer. We've got Tony the Surgeon and Lawrence the Scientist. So if you want to leave in the comments section your names for these people, NG is a female and Tony is a female and Tara is a female. Oh, Lawrence is a female. So yeah, some ladies' names, uh, whatever you want to name them, is absolutely fine by me as long as it's not offensive. Um, and I prefer funny names, so go for funny names. But pick whatever you want. All right, guys, I'll see you in the games. Okay, the three of you wake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to es the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Some time later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded sh starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. We are in. Okay, so the three of us are in. We have a lovely Alistair the Labrador. Unfortunately, I don't think we can rename them. Oh, don't you dare. Mark has learnt. Mark all has learnt, please. I'm sure there's a button for that, but I can't be asked finding it. So let's unrestrict all of our stuff and zoom out a little bit just so we can get everything on our screen. Yeah, because you can see it's actually quite widespread, some of it. So there's all of our steel, our medicine, and our food. So let's look at the world that we've got. Where do we want to set up? That's a good question, Tom. Well... We've got this nice pocket of steel here. Actually, we've got a really good pocket of steel, so we could actually build a wall across here. It saves us building half of the side walls and the entire back wall, and we can actually dig into the caves if we want to do that as well. And it's not too far from our landing spot, so we'll be able to get there quite quickly. So yeah, I think that's where we want to go. And we could even then um, close off certain sections of the map as well, like force them into these choke points, for example, by uh, building walls across here. So I quite like the idea of setting up here. There isn't much um, rich soil, unfortunately. In fact, the richest soil is right there. Rich soil essentially allows you to grow food a lot faster on that particular bit. But it seems like there aren't many good places with rich soil anyway, so I don't think we need to worry about it. And if we do expand, then we've got rich soil pockets there and rich soil there as well. So I think we're just going to go here. So let's go zone area. Let's set up a stockpile right here and a dumping stockpile there. Doesn't particularly matter where. Let's speed up time. Get our guys to do their thing. Start hauling the stuff in. So I think we're going to do an outdoor build. I don't think we're going to build into the caves. Uh, as part of our base so we're gonna go into I'm gonna do this into planning so I can leave them running doing their uh, their thing uh, orders so uh, house wise I think we want I can never remember how big you need these but we're going seven by seven um, is that six in there oops and yeah we want a bit bigger than that Something like that. That seems about right. Actually, that seems a bit big. That's about the size we want, I think. So that's going to be everybody's houses. And we're going to have the doors going out that way, I think. So that was seven. I want seven there. Seven there. Yeah, made that mistake. And seven there, and seven there. Oops. 
and remove plans. Bam, bam, bam. Those are our three houses. We're going to build the insides out of wood since there is absolutely tons of it. And we're going to build our walls briefly out of steel, but we're going to research stone cutting quite fast so that we can build them out of stone. I think that's the plan we want to go with. Door, door, and door. And then into furniture, just briefly, because we won't get all of this done before they want to go to bed. We'll just put some sleeping spots down. And as for orders, we want them to chop all the wood in the rooms as well. We want all of that gone. And in fact, there's some of these that haven't actually been selected because they're not fully grown yet to actually chop for wood. So we'll just set them to cut plants, which essentially does the same thing, but with less... Um, uh, what am I going to say? Less output. Less yield. Right, let's actually look at our needs. Our character, sorry. Uh, you are great at melee. You're crap at melee and crap at shooting. You're the best shot. So the best shot gets the survival rifle. You are the best melee unit, so you get the plasteel knife. And you are neither good at any of those things, so you get the pistol. I just want to equip them now because the rain's actually deteriorating. So we actually want our stockpile inside eventually. And we can accommodate that kind of thing, but right now, I just want to get the bare essentials going. So... Oh. Fox is on the hunt. Okay. That's one building indoors. So, let's actually look at our priorities. Let's um, deselect them all. Quick way to do this is just deselect everything. Copy, paste, paste. There we are. Right, manual priorities. You are our doctor. You will do doctoring constantly. And you are our hunter and our chief constructor. But since you're doing construction, someone else is going to do it with you. And then you are construction, but I want you to do growing first. So we'll prioritize that over that. Essentially what I'm doing here is the brighter ones are the ones that our colonists are better at. So I want to make sure the best people are doing the jobs that are suited to them. And everybody else can just kind of do a shared job across all of it. And research. Everybody does a four on research because we want them to just do it when they've got essentially nothing better to do. And I'll just up the priorities when I actually want them to do anything. So firefighting is always important. Uh, everybody should do firefighting. Patience. Everybody but the doctor should go to the medical bed when they need treatment. Mostly because I want the doctor to treat the others before that happens. And then we can treat bed rest just the same. For now, because we don't have a particularly good doctor, I'm going to put these on four priorities so that I can actually right-click people and tell them to do their doctoring. Flicking is turning on switches. Might as well put them on one priority just so that when I set it, they actually do it. And wardening, you're going to be our number one warden. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think you you find wardening like that. Yet again, uh, actually you are you're a two and a zero, so we actually don't ever want them to do wardening because they won't actually do any favors for us. And handling, right now I'll leave that unticked because it's really crap. And we've got two two skilled pl uh, players on that one, so I'm gonna make them priority two and let's see priority one for you. No, priority two. So I want you to finish growing and do any of the uh, special stuff. And then everybody else, priority four, growing. Oh, priority three, so it all gets done. Mining. Let's see. Your construction one. So I want you as a priority two miner. You are priority three. You are priority four. And priority three on plant cutting. Plant cutting is cutting down trees, essentially, and harvesting the plants when it comes round to it. And in fact, our grower should do um, plant cutting one as well. Uh, smithing, tailoring, and art and crafting, that kind of stuff, I'll leave alone. Uh, let's go priority four for everything. Uh, let's see. 
Actually, you know what? We'll make these threes so that they actually do this over doctoring. Uh, that seems about right. We'll adjust it as we go. If anything seems uh, a bit off, then we'll uh, we'll adjust it. Okay. So we've at least got a lot of wood. Did they uh, haul everything that was over here? It was like here on it. Ooh. Oh my god, that is a lot of plasteel. Nice. So we're planning on doing a fair bit of trading, hopefully. So with that in mind, lots of plasteel is pretty good. Though we probably want to use it ourselves if we ever plan to uh, make uh, the escape ship. I'm going to make a production room slash kitchen slash dining area. So this is going to be... Uh, actually, that seems a bit small, actually. This is going to be the fridge for our dining area. Do I want to go that way? Do I want to go that way with the building? I suppose if we go to planning, our defences... For now, we will expand them as we go, but for now we'll keep them fairly small scale, and we'll just have a wall like that, I think. That seems about right. And then somewhere along here we'll make a kill box. In fact, if we make the plan like so, and bring it along there, what we can actually do to make this into a, um, a little tunnel that they have to go through and then we'll have turrets set up here and this can actually be our kill box slash our way out and I think how do we want to do this hmm there's a way to get we need it to be a two gap because we're going to have a lot of deadfall traps in there I think if we make a lip like so it might encourage them to go around. I'm not sure about that. I want to make sure that we're shooting at them and they don't have the range on us, so they have to actually come into this kill box. So maybe that goes a little bit further on like that. Yeah. Uh, we'll cut that off for now. We'll just leave it like that. That's going to be our wall, essentially. So with that in mind... That being our fridge, we will make our dining hall slash brief production room like that, I think. And then there'll be a door there so that we can have easy access to the fridge. And all of our dining stuff is going to be over here. It's also quicker to the bedrooms as well. So for efficiency's sake, that's what we're going to do. And once that building is actually complete as well, our stockpile is briefly going to be indoors while we figure out the best way of solving that problem. We'll uh, chop that down there and cut these here. So they are largely unnecessary. The grass itself will just die out because it's indoors. But the rest of it's kind of uh, a bit annoying and slows you down a bit. Okay, so our stockpile's indoors. Our fridge is essentially indoors. I've just noticed we haven't made a growing zone. So, um, let's make our growing zones over here so that they're, uh, they're out of the way. We'll go 6x6 six six for potatoes, 6x6 six six for corn, I guess, and a 6x3 for our herbal medicine. What else am I forgetting? We could make smoke leaf, but I don't think it's necessary. So we'll make this into corn. That one's already potatoes. I don't know if we've got the... Oh, we do have the skills for growing. Yes, just enough to make heal root, which is good. What else is on here that we might want? We probably want an extra patch of potatoes, actually. It's better to have more than we need than not enough. So we'll make another batch of potatoes there. And that should hopefully give us a varied food source and enough to survive through winter when the, uh, the growing zones stop producing. So allow them to get that underway. 
and we'll create another stockpile. This one is just going to be clear all. Priority critical. It's only going to allow foods in there and corpses of animals for butchering. That sounds about right. And for power, uh, solar seems like the way to go for now. We'll make them back here since we don't have anything going on back there. We'll have one there, one there. I'm going to have to order to mine that out. Oops. Mine that, please. In fact, we're going to have to mine a line down there. Can I uh, cancel that, please? Cancel that. Thank you. So we can get actually all the way around our solar powers. Oh, NG failed while constructing the solar plant. That sucks. And setting up batteries is also a thing that we need to do. So we can actually... Uh, putting in a uh, wooden room is a bad idea. So actually what I'm going to do is probably wall off this here. And go steel door. This is going to be our battery room. We're probably going to mine into it eventually anyway, but for now... That's where we're going to store all of our batteries. We're going to go power, power conduit. And we're going to run our line into here. And we're going to have to run a line across here as well to join up these uh, solar panels. And in fact, that's a bad idea. We're going to go into the walls so that they're not exposed. It's a lot better. And batteries, what's the best layout? Probably like that, and then bam, bam. Yeah, that sounds about right. And we'll join it up like so. And from that, we can make a fridge, and suddenly our food is frozen. Once that's got uh, gotten done, anyway. Wonderful. Set the fridge to minus three so that when it gets hot, it's slightly. Ooh, group of. Ithumoania. Yeah, they're, they're visiting. Hi. We've got Pi and Marjot. Good. Good. So our farms are underway. That's good. Always nice to see. And how much steel have we got? 364. It's not enough to finish the wall, but we have plenty of stuff to get that done. Need a meal source, so I need to set someone. Let's just make sure my hunter... Yeah, my hunter is the one with the rifle. So I'm actually going to order some hunting to be done. So some rats, squirrels, turkeys, rabbits. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's get some food going. Because I don't know if the uh, survival meals are going to last. And in fact, they're probably not since we only have eight. So, production. Let's go with an electric stove. Uh, let's see. We want the electric stove to be closest to the fridge. So I think that's the best place to put it. And the butchering table, which will be used a lot less, but still also needs to be in proximity of the fridge. We'll put there. So we can butcher these animals and actually make meals out of their meat. Let's just haul that out of the way. And, um, ooh, Tony thinks you should give your faction a name. What should your faction be called? Oh, God, I don't know. We also have to name the village as well. Let's call it, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be boring. I'm just going to let it go. We can name it ourselves. We can just ignore that ourselves. So, yeah. Name our village. Do it. I don't know if we can rename it. But if you name it, I'll call it that. Okay. We now have an electric stove. So, we need to add Bill and make some simple meals. Let's do it till we have ten. Should be enough. And butcher's table's now good. So, we'll butcher any creatures forever. So long as they appear in our fridge, we will butcher them. Just noticed our stockpile currently allows food. We won't allow that anymore. So we now have frozen food. 
And we're going to have to order some mining to be done here because we're actually going to begin construction on our steel wall. So let's get that done. As I mentioned, we're eventually going to turn to stone walls. But for now, having a defense in place where I can clearly see where our enemy is coming is a pretty good idea. So we'll get that done. And let's get some furniture in here as well. Start on these double beds. Oh, we've got a mad animal. That might be from the hunting. We shall see. Local squirrel has gone mad and will attack anyone it sees. Oh, NG. Can you, uh... No, not melee. Fire at that squirrel. Thank you. Sweet. Undraft. Do your thing. Continue hunting them. Alright. So we're dangerously low on food, but we're pretty much just countering that right now. As we butcher some more creatures. Uh, this timber wolf needs to go. So timber wolves, they, they allow, uh, when they're hungry, they attack our people. This is very important. In fact, Tony, you should not be doing this. Run, Tony. Tony, run. There you go. Shoot. There you go. Right. Nearly attacked timber wolf to death. We're going to have to do that whenever any, uh, carnivorous animals... Or animals of the hunting variety enter our base because, pure and simple, they will hunt our people. So let's set that to medical. Undraft you. Rest until healed. Is Tony our doctor? Yes. So someone else, like Engie, for example, is going to have to prioritise treating Tony. Sweet. So we've got plenty of food going. Slow growth on our potato plants currently, but we're getting there. And we've got power. We just need more furniture in our double beds. We need our lamps going as well. Uh, what bother with one in the fridge? It's just not necessary. And we like new purple lines. Isn't that interesting? We'll run that along here. Should be able to hit all of the lights. And we can run that all the way around our base from here on out. Just make sure, yeah, that is connected to both solar panels. So there's plenty of ways for our batteries to, uh, in fact, let's make a double connection. Just in case this line here breaks from a shortage. We want to be able to connect to it in several different ways to avoid a complete power outage when any of that line gets cut would be bad I don't think I need to explain anyway guys that is going to do it for the first episode so if you're enjoying the series then be sure to leave a like it helps me out a great deal don't forget to leave me some names for our colonists as well and any suggestions you may have I'm happy to hear them um, be sure to subscribe for more RimWorld content we'll be doing a fair few playthroughs of this uh, over the coming weeks slash months so be sure to subscribe for them if you want to watch them as they arrive and as always, stay for the end card to see the rest of the content I've got to offer, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.